of our sins, our shortcomings, and make us fit to serve. We thank you for your suffering, dying, shedding blood for the remission of our sins. And on the third day, all power is in your hand, and we just glorify, glorify you today. And we thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us again to come to take care of this business. We ask our blessing upon this board and upon this staff. We ask a special blessing upon our former member, Miss Betty Brown, who is now in rehab, and we ask that you touch her mind, touch her heart, and those who are caring for her and her family, we ask you to strengthen them and give them the spirit, and most of all, let them look to you for which comes and help. We ask that blessings upon her and continue to strengthen her. That she may be recovered for fully, but all you have to do is just speak a word. We pray for those who have come tonight, Lord, seeking our help. We ask the Holy Spirit that you guide us and lead us that we might do that for which is right. This we offer this night. Amen. 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 to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Christie, would you please call the roll? Chair Jake Forte. Here. Vice Chair Art Little. Here. Mr. Randy Armentor. Here. Ms. Latricia Cobb. Here. Ms. Julia Dickerson. Here. Ms. Sharon Galicia. Here. Mr. Kyle Link. Here. Mr. Gary Navarro. Here. Mr. Kirk Smith. Here. And Mr. LaSalle Williams. Here. Thank you, Ms. Christie. This is an 11 member board. It will take a majority of those members present to grant or deny any request heard tonight. The chair will refrain from voting unless that vote might affect the outcome. The meeting will be conducted with me reading the request from the agenda. The planning staff will give a presentation and report their recommendations. If the applicant would like to add to the staff's presentation or if someone from the audience has comments, please come to the microphone and state your name, address, and the nature of your request. All persons wishing to speak other than the applicants need to fill out a blue request to appear form located in the back of the room. The form must be given to a staff member prior to the reading of the agenda item. As required by this board's bylaws, in all cases, the proponents will be limited to 10 minutes. Opponents will be granted 10 minutes as well, with each speaker allowed no more than three minutes. <clears throat> I recommend that a spokesperson be selected for the large group uh, wanting to speak on the same agenda item. If four or more speaker request forms are submitted, the time allowed for individual speakers will be limited based upon the number of forms submitted. The chair has the right to limit speakers who present redundant information or personal attacks. In unique situations, the chair may extend or the board may vote to extend the time allotted for speakers. After discussion, the board will vote on each request. I will announce the decision of the board after the vote. The zoning exceptions and variance requests are final tonight. The rezoning cases will go before the police jury for final action on October 19, 2017 at 5.30 p.m. This meeting is being filmed by the Calcasieu Parish Government Channel and can be viewed on Wednesday and Thursday following the meeting. For additional run dates, check the website at www.cppj.net. Channel 5 in Lake Charles, Sulphur, Moss Bluff, Westlake, Benton, De Quincey and Gillis. Channel 99 in Carlos and Grand Lake. At this time, I would ask for you to please turn off all electronic devices or any noisemakers. Moving to item five, take appropriate action on VAR-0817-0014, a request by Cody Evans for a variance to allow an additional dwelling on one lot at 2179 Lynn Trahan Road in Ward 4. I will entertain a motion for approval with the stipulations. I move. Motion by Coach Williams and by Ms. Galicia. Ms. Wallace. This property is located north of Sulphur and encompasses 1.19 acres of agricultural zone land. Currently on the property is an existing manufactured home that serves as the applicant's brother's residence. The applicant would like to move another manufactured home on the land to serve as his residence. Because the land has no public road frontage and less than two acres of square footage, a variance is needed to allow the second dwelling. We have not received any written opposition to this request. And because the board has recently granted similar requests, the staff recommends that the request be granted with the following stipulations, that the development adhere to the site plan on file with the division provided that the director may authorize adjustments 
and that the manufactured home be skirted prior to the utilities being connected. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Does the applicant have anything to add to the staff's presentation? You're not required, but if you would like to add something, you may come to the podium at this time. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments by the board? Seeing no opposition, all in favor state aye. 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 All opposed? Nope. Item five passes. Item six, take appropriate action on case VAR 0817-0018, a request by Nathaniel Allured for a variance to decrease the side yard setback requirement. Requires 10 feet and he is requesting four feet. At 5781 Goss Ferry Road in Ward 1, I will entertain a motion for approval with the stipulations. So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb second. and a second by Mr. Link. Ms. Wallace. This property is located east of Moss Bluff and encompasses a third of an acre of agricultural zone land. Currently on the property is a two bedroom house and the applicant plans to add two bedrooms to this house. The addition will encroach on the side yard setback and necessitates a variance. We have not received any written opposition to this request. And because the development is consistent with the area, the staff recommends that the request be granted with the stipulation that the development <coughs> adhere to the site plan on file, provided that the director may authorize adjustments. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Does the applicant have anything to add to the staff's presentation? Uh, not at this time, but if there are any questions, uh, we'd be happy to address them. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments by the board? Okay. Seeing no opposition, all in favor state aye. 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 All opposed? Item six passes. Mm -hmm. Item seven, take appropriate action on VAR-0917-0020, a request by Howard mm -hmm. Perkins for a variance to allow a lounge within 300 feet of a residence at 1020 Highway 27 in Ward 6. I will entertain a motion for approval with the stipulations. So moved. Motion by Mr. Navarre. Second. Second by Ms. Cobb. Ms. Wallace. This property is located in the De Quincey area and encompasses 0.17 acres of general commercial zone land. Currently on the property is Wingate's Grocery, a convenience store that's licensed to sell packaged liquor. The applicant would like to convert the store into a lounge and parish code requires that lounges are at least 300 feet from residences. And measuring by the code requirements, the closest residence is only 56 feet away. There is a lounge to the north where the board approved a similar request in 2004. However, that structure is located on over five acres of land and the closest residence is across the highway. We have not received any written opposition to this request, but because the development is in such close proximity to several residences and is not consistent with the character of the immediate area, the staff recommends that the request be denied. Should the board grant the request, the staff recommends the following stipulations that a revised site plan be submitted illustrating the required parking spaces designed in a manner to enable vehicles to exit in a forward-facing manner, that the development adhere to that site plan, provided that the director may authorize adjustments, <coughs> that all exterior lighting must be oriented inward toward the development to minimize intrusion onto surrounding properties, that screening must be provided in accordance with section 2650 of the parish code, and that permitting is subject to approval of the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Mr. Gabb, we do have one uh, blue card in opposition. At this time, if the applicant would like to add to the staff's presentation, you may come to the podium at this time. <coughs> Got nothing to add? Okay, I'm sorry. I, someone had gotten up in the rear. I think. Um, this time I will call Mr. Corey Maddox. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. Corey Maddox, uh, I'm at 1034 Core Street, De Quincey, Louisiana. I'm right behind Wind Gates. Um, I have a um, signed petition by 14, or let me see here, let me turn, 16 residents that uh, live behind the uh, Wind Gates that are opposed to it. Uh, we all have small children and there's some old people that live back there and we're just really concerned about having a bar or a lounge that's located in that close of proximity to our residences. Sure. Uh, children play on the highways and everything. We all know what goes on with bars and stuff at night. Uh, the other bar is quite loud and we call the sheriff's office a lot on that particular bar and we just don't want another one we have to call on all the time. Okay. okay. Any 
questions for Mr. Maddox? <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Yes. You may be seated. This time, if the applicant would like to address any of the concerns, uh, we'll give you the opportunity. No. Okay. Any other questions or comments by the board? Ms. Christie, let's uh, do a roll call vote. Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Navarre? No. Ms. Galicia? No. Mr. Link? No. Mr. Little? No. Ms. Dickerson? No. Mr. Armentor? No. Mr. Williams? No. Ms. Cobb? No. Nine against. Item seven fails. Item eight, take appropriate action on case EX0917-0007, a request by Wilson Chapman for an exception to allow residential development, manufactured home in the 800 block of Hooks Road in Ward 6. I will entertain a motion for approval with the stipulations. I move. I'll move. Motion by Ms. Galicia and a second by Ms. Cobb. Ms. Wallace. This property is located in the De Quincey area and encompasses just over an acre of single family residential zone land. The applicants purchased the property in 1996, but were not aware of the zoning. At this time, they would like to locate a new 32 by 66 manufactured home on the land. We have received a petition from some neighbors, and it is on your tablets. Uh, because there is no evidence of a hardship, the staff recommends that the request be denied. Should the board grant the request, the staff recommends the following stipulations that the development adhere to the site plan on file provided that the director may authorize adjustments and that the manufactured home must be skirted prior to utilities being connected. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Wallace. We do have uh, one proponent, uh, blue card, and two in opposition. Uh, at this time, if the applicant would like to add to the staff's presentation uh, or have any comments, you may come to the podium at this time. Good afternoon. Um, um, I'm Constance Chapman. I'm Wilson's wife, and um, like she stated, we purchased the property. Is this your address? Could you state your address for the record? Uh, our address is 814 Douglas Road, De Quincey, Louisiana. Okay. Thank you. And um, at the time that we bought the property, it was in 1996. We had every intentions of building a home there. Um, my husband got injured. Um, three years later, and we just had a hard time. Um, he was off from work for years, uh, and when he did go back to work, um, he's working now, but we haven't got the income that we had before. So it is a hardship on us. Uh, we looked um, at several places. They have Camille's home in Lake Charles here, and they want like $30,000 down payment for these homes. And we looked at homes that we felt like was in our budget, and um, that $30,000 is just not feasible for us, you know. And we were just hoping that the board would grant us permission to put it there. I mean, we're getting a brand new home from Oak Creek, um, and we, we're just hoping that the board vote in our favor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Navarre. The, the mobile home that's on there now, y'all going to take it off? No, it's not a mobile home on there now. We bought the property from someone that had a home that built. Oh, okay. We live right now, we live um, on Douglas Road. My father died in 2007, and one of my sisters and I, we decided to move in the house. It was five bedrooms, three baths. Well, it's been working out fine, but I have a little sister that had some medical problems, and she had a massive stroke, and she had to move back to De Quincey. And right now, uh, she's in a bedroom, but uh, the bed... The bedroom that I have would be better suited for her wheelchair as far as maneuvering around. Um, they have nurses that come in, and it's a little tight where she is now. And I feel like, you know, my husband and I have the property, and, you know, we, we want to try and, and move out so that we can help everybody. You know, my sister will be in a better position, and we'll be in a better position. So, like, right now, it's just a slab on the property. Okay. That's, that's what we were wondering. There's no house there. There's nothing the there right now. Are you going to, if we pass, you going to put the mobile home on the slab? On the slab. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Was that your question, Mr. 
Yeah. Yeah, okay. Miss uh, Miss Chapman, I I'm looking at the staff's report. So there's no evidence of hardship, but according to your explanation, there is a hardship. There is a hardship. Uh, we went like three and a half years living on workman's comp. And when he did go back to work, my husband, you know, we hardworking people. Right now I work two jobs. It takes for me to work two jobs and him to work one to pretty well be about where we were in the beginning when we first bought the, pro the property and wanted to do something. However, we see now that building a home is, is, is a little different. The building products are much higher and they make nice uh, manufactured homes. It's, it's a manufactured home, brand new, from Oak Creek, and it's really nice, you know. I'm not trying to bring no one's property value down. What I'm trying to do is is live on something that we purchased years ago. And, and that's correct. We did not know about the zoning at that time because they had at least five or six uh, older mobile home, 70 models out there. When we bought the property, they had like a, a, a house that uh, <clears throat> this man built himself for his family, you know, uh, and it, it, it didn't look like much. They have wood frame houses out there. Yeah, they have some nice houses out there, you know, but we're just trying to live on what we purchased. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Chapman? Are there other Felicia? mobile homes in there now? Y yes, ma'am. In that ma neighborhood, on your street? On my street, it is. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, um, I think maybe about 10 years ago, they had a zoning hearing. Mm -hmm. One of my cousins purchased a mobile home, and it's, it's, it's our lot, it's uh, Miss Patricia Coleman's lot, and then it's the mobile home that my cousin put out there. And he, he did brick the front of it, and it looked real nice, and a lot of them complained about it. But he bricked the front of it, and it looks real nice. And we, we would probably in the near f future try and do the same thing. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Chapman? Thank you, ma'am. You may be You're seated. You're welcome. This time I will call it... Um, is it Patrice Coleman? Coleman? I'm sorry. I... You please state your name and address for the record, ma'am. Yes. My name is Patricia Coleman, 829 Hooks Road, De Quincey, Louisiana. And I would be their neighbor, and I have no ill feelings for them. But at the time we bought this property, I've been in my house 40 years. And I have added and done more to make it worth more. And uh, the next door neighbor, we came for that hearing maybe about eight years ago. And we were not for the trailer. And at that time, he did do a lot to fix his house up, and it looks nice. But about a year, or maybe going on two years, he left the house. He is not in the trailer there anymore. He sold it. And what I'm looking at, me and my husband work, he's deceased, and my husband was here for the last hearing, but he's deceased, and we worked hard, and we were all trying to get a nice neighborhood, you know, because we didn't have a lot of money either, but we worked. He worked on the railroad, and I worked as the secretary for the Calcasieu Parish School Board. And I'm just, I'm just by myself now at the house, and I just want to know, you know, if they're going to put this trail in here, what is it going to look like? And I'm 70 years old, and I am thinking that later I may have to sell my house because I'm not going to probably stay by my house, sell at my house forever. And it's a large house. So I want to be fair to everyone. We all have hardships. And like I said, when we built that house, it was back in 1976. And we wanted a home. We got our blueprints, and we did it. And I mean, I mean, I love it there. But it's just, and, and with the uh, Chapmans, I'm sorry for the, you know what's going on there. They've had their property, I guess, ten or eleven years. And I just say, you know, when you want to get something, you just have to get together and just start working on it and putting together. And it's been times we have ups and downs. My husband was a double amputee. And we were able to still stay in our house and keep everything going. And I just did not, and we did send a little petition in for some of the property owners that own quite a bit of land. 
because we feel that that's going to eventually tear us down if we want to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, like I say, and I know I'm getting up in age now, and I may not be able to stay there for a long time, but people will not come to an area where it's just, and at that time when we bought this land, we were the first one on that street to build a house, but we had all hopes and ambitions that our neighborhood would just, and it is a beautiful neighborhood, but that's all I guess, I, I know I can't talk forever, but I think it's another Miss Dale Marbury, my down the street neighbor, but I appreciate y'all. And I, like I said, I don't want to be ugly to anyone. And I know how things are for everyone because we've had hard times too. Sure. But I want you to, you know, examine how we are feeling about this. Thank you. We appreciate Thank your you. comments. Uh, Ms. Marbu. My name is Delisha Marlboro. I live at, um, uh, 875 Hooks Road on De in De Quincey, Louisiana. I'm here as opposing the uh, trailer, the manufactured home as they call it. Um, I was one before my husband, my husband too has passed. We live in a neighborhood where a lot of, um, we're all about the same age, we built our houses about the same time, and we all in the neighborhood of 60, 69 to 70. And I'm worried about, when you start, we had some trailers in our neighborhood. They were abandoned. And that some of them, the, the, I know FEMA buried two across the street from me. Then the, an, an, the neighbor on the other street, that trailer has been, was abandoned. And they leave those trailers in our neighborhood. And I'm not for it because I don't, I don't think that it's fair that we work as hard as we work for our property because I'm gonna have to sell too because I'm, I'm at an age that I'm gonna have to move out and do something, you know? My husband is deceased. In fact, I call it the widow's neighborhood because almost all of us out there are widows now. Right. So right. the thing is, is that uh, when we get ready to move out, we wanna be able to get the most that we can because we have invested our entire life into these homes. Sure. So we want to get the most of our, out of our homes and manufactured trailers, manufactured homes. They call them manufactured. The other house they call, um, Mr. Thomas' house, they call it a manufactured home. It's still a trailer. And one thing, too, what I'm being uh, mostly senior citizens out there, a lot of times if, they, if we allow this, this one to come in, then another one to come in, and then it's going to bring the neighborhood down. And you understand that a lot of times when you have trailers moving in, then you begin to bring all kind of traffic in your neighborhood. We are old. I old. I'm 69 years old. So I'm old too. So I don't want to see, I don't want to see my neighborhood go down. I want to do, see my neighborhood, if it can go up, I would love to see it go up. But I don't want to see it go down. Thank you. We appreciate your comments. You want to ask a question? Ms. Cobb? Uh, Ms. Marbury, Ms. Cobb has a question for you. There are two abandoned trailers in your neighborhood? There were, uh, FEMA buried two. FEMA buried two across the street from me. Then there was another one on the other one. It was abandoned also. And they finally cleaned up that property. It stayed out there for about five years abandoned, but they finally cleaned it up. Uh, somebody has cleaned it up. I don't know who, but somebody has cleaned it up. But it, it was abandoned to it. And that's what I'm, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think that it's fair. You know, they actually, when you buy these, you think you're going to keep them, but people abandon them, you know. So, yes, but we, I don't think we have, I think we have one trail now left in our neighborhood. I think it's only one, but um, I can't think about one. No comments from the audience. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe two, maybe, it may be, two. I can't, I'm trying to think of two. Oh, oh, it is, it's two, it's two. And they are, are they occupied or they're? One is occupied, uh, both of them are occupied, yes. Two of them are occupied, mm -hmm. but we had three abandoned trailers. FEMA buried two trailers under the ground. They were just that trashed, right. you know? So uh, I, I'm, that's, that's my, opposition for it, that's, that's my opposition. Plus the fact I'm concerned about the senior citizens in my neighborhood. Sure. I got one question for you. Go. Leave the podium. 
the the trailer that is bricked all the way around at some time years ago that we approved, and the young man bricked it because I went up there several times. Matter of fact, I was up there about a couple of months ago. Has he abandoned that trailer? He had. He sold it. He sold it and left. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions? <laughs> Is someone living in it now? Miss Marvin. Since he sold? Yes, yes, there's someone living in it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, when you say they buried the trailer, did they bury it in the ground on the property? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, I have a request to appear form from Miss Wood. She's a, a, a proponent. Mm -hmm. oh. <coughs> My name is Ada Wood, and I am for it. Your address, please. 880 Ernest Moria Road, and I'm adjacent to her property. It's adjacent to my property. She lives right in the back of me, and I am for it. And I realize what the other two are saying, but I think that they should have a chance of doing something for themselves. God has brought us a long way. We look back and we think about where we come from. We think about the help that we had to get where we're at. And this is why I am for them. They keep their property clean and they've been keeping it clean ever since they bought the property. And I don't have anything against that. They mow, they weed eat, they keep their ditches clean. There's no, nothing on it. And I think that they should have a chance to live like we are living. I think that they should have a chance to do what we're doing. Okay. Any questions for Ms. Woods? Thank you, ma'am. And I have Maybe. A the petition. So if you all would just consider giving her, giving them a chance. Sure. There are some very nice people, very manable people. I'm older than them. I'm 68 years old. I've been on that land. I, we bought the land in 1973. We built in 1975. And I'm still on that land, and I don't plan on leaving it. And she will be my neighbor. Right. They will be my neighbor, rather. Well, I'm, I have something for staff. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You may be seated. Okay. Mr. Armitar. Okay, the, the property. Yep. Uh, was this, they're saying that it was zoned, they had trailers on it. So evidently it was zoned when these people bought that property, it was zoned for manufactured homes or A1, and you can have one mobile home per acre or yeah, something? Yeah, well, it was zoned. <clears throat> what it is, something different, uh, Mr. Armitar, is that this property, uh, most of this property out here, that was uh, zoned in the early 80s when comprehensive zoning took place. Mm -hmm. And so there may have been prior to that mobile homes placed out there on, the, on those properties before comprehensive zoning went into effect and so when comprehensive zoning was approved um, you know the, the the elected officials at that time and the board at that time zoned this area as single-family residential which is our highest zoning classification as you well know and so that is what's that is what has remained you know since that day and so the idea is that you can the, the mobile homes that were out there, they could remain as long as they were remain. Somebody lived in them, they were grandfathered right. in. Okay. Mm -hmm. But once they were became unoccupied or moved off, then a stick built home or something, you know, uh, has to be placed on that property because of the zoning. Okay. So it, in other words, it wasn't. They bought in 1995. Did I hear that right? Ma'am, in 1996 they bought it. So it, so it was. That's your knowledge. It was not zoned for mobile homes. No, no. 
Not at that time. Not at that time. It was already. Yeah, comprehensive zoning. zoning took place in the early 80s. Yeah, I got caught up in that. I'll tell you my age. <laughs> <laughs> I bought well, property in 76. And so it was, already, it was already zoned single family residential at the time that, that they purchased okay. the property. I'm not sure if, you know, when they purchased the property, if, you know, when they, how they did that, whether it was cash or, I, I'm not sure how they did right. it. And, you know, I can't explain So this is why. not a, this is not a subdivision that, with restrictions even. This is just some uh, parish roads. Think so? Is it subdivision? Mm -hmm. it, it may be, but I, we don't handle subdivision. It's a private. Yeah. Well, I know you know we don't, but I'm just curious as to how these roads even come into place. It, it appears to be like somebody cut these roads in here. Somebody developed this as a subdivision. Right. Well, they they could have developed it, you know, Prior years ago. Back, before, right. Back in the 60s before or 70s. subdivision or requirements came into place, and you could have, yeah. you know, built the road and, you know. Right. Done it meets and bounds. I know back in the early <laughs> 70s, you know, we had restrictions. You had to build a house of a certain size. It had to have brick veneer on. That's right. Even back then, you know, uh, three quarters of the house or two thirds of the house. I was just curious if this was one of those subdivisions like that. So we don't really know any of that then, huh? It was uh, meets and bounds. It's not within a recognized subdivision. Oh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't a. So evidently, somebody built the roads. Right. <clears throat> and didn't subdivide the property. They just built the roads and then they sold off. Sold lots. Lots. <laughs> okay. No, that's. Yeah. <laughs> I understand now. I'm just curious about the, you know, if, if, if they got caught up in it like I did. I have one more staff. Mr. Navarre. Okay. Could, now when you, I'm, can I ask the lady a question? Absolutely. Which one would you like me to uh, ask? Uh, um, Ms. Chapman. Ms. Chapman. When, when y'all bought the property. Come, come up to the podium, please. When y'all bought the property in 1996, there were trailers out there in the neighborhood then? Yes, sir. So you, you thought it was just, it would be. Well, at that time, no we were planning on building a house. So there were trailers out there, but it, I, I mean. It wasn't going to bother you if they did. But the mobile home that's on side of Miss Patricia Coleman, it got moved out there in 2010. And the, my cousin bought the property sometime before he moved the property out there. We've been bought ours, you know. Uh, he, he recently bought his, and, and he got his moved out there. Mm -hmm. And on the question of how the property came up, whenever we bought ours and got our deed, uh, it's called Green Cutoff. Uh, Mr. Otha Green bought the land and he sold off the lots because it has everyone, uh, everyone's lot is, is labeled as to who it's for. Okay, thank you. Ms. Galicia, Ms. Chapman, if you'll stay up there. Okay. This is for the staff, but Go ahead. when did a mobile home move out there? The last one oh. we have record of is 2008. And actually, uh, the petitioner moved the manufactured home out there before the board hearing. Oh. And the board originally denied his request. And um, he basically, I guess, filed an appeal. And the board agreed to hear it again and approved it at that time. So it was 2008 is the last record that we have. Okay. And that's the one, the brick facade? Yes. Okay. I have Just a question um the staff and the information that we're reading states that there's not a hardship but miss chapman is saying that they do have a hardship did she explain all that to the staff she did, she did. oh i i didn't I, I i've never lived outside of the city limits and when i went to the planning department I, I didn't realize i needed to that's actually as a matter of fact that's when i found out that I may have a problem moving a manufactured home out there. So I, di I didn't realize any of that was into play at that time. Thank you. Ms. Cobb. Yeah. And you are <coughs> putting the house on the slab. Yes, ma'am, on the slab. So it's not just a trailer type. No, and, and I want to say this. Um, 
my husband and I, and I has been together since 86. Uh, when we move wherever, we plan on this being our forever home. We have one daughter, and when we close our eyes, we want to leave something for her. We don't plan on abandoning anything, you know. This is something, we're not going to pay that type of money and move out there and just leave it, you know. We're not ruthless people. You, any of my neighbors where I have ever lived can tell you that. We are good people. We will not bring riffraff out there. You know, I mean, we are good people. I work two jobs. My husband worked. We good people, you know. I mean, we don't we don't plan on having all of these problems that were stated, you know. And I want to say another thing. On that petition that you have, uh, one of the guys that signed the petition for us, the uh, mobile home, uh, it was a maybe a 70s model that she's saying that FEMA buried. He lived across the street from that home. And before that home was destroyed, he got his house appraised. And he said appraised at $250,000, you know. Now, I know that's he say, but this is what he told us the day he signed that petition. Okay. Ms. Coleman, uh, if there's anything else you would like to uh, say as far as in regards to the opposition? I would just like the board to really give us a chance. Um, we good people, you know. We purchased the property. Uh, we're trying to do something to get on it. You know, like I said, we can't afford a down payment of $30,000. Building products are so much higher now. If my husband wouldn't have got injured years ago, we would have been able to build when they when it wasn't as high as it is now. But it, it, it's high now, it is. And, and we desire to get out there on our property. When we first bought that property, the person we bought it from, it had a lot of pine trees on it. And he had cut those pine trees down to sell the puckwood. He left all of the debris. It was branches. It was the uh, the uh, the stumps. I mean, that's all you saw on that property. We took that property. We paid someone to grind the stumps. We trying to make it nice, you know. We're not trying to bring down nobody's value. We're not trying to get in the neighborhood and have all kind of people come in all hours of the night. That's not us. That's not us, you know. We are different people. We're trying to purchase something nice. Uh, these these manufactured homes, uh, a trailer is a trailer. These manufactured homes are really nice. If, if y'all ever get a chance to go view one of them, I mean, they got hardwood floors. They are beautiful. They are beautiful, you know. Thank and, you, Ms. Coleman. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments by the board? Um, just a couple comments uh, I would like to make. I, I know that it's been said that the, the trailer that we approved, you know, has been sold. Um, it's just always, uh, uh, you know, uh, I always have concern or trepidation when we start adding and setting precedents for adding trailers in R1 um, because things change, you know. I, 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 first of all, I'd like to compliment both the applicant and the opponents for uh, how you presented your 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 feelings tonight very uh, considerate and courteous to each other uh, and to the board um, but I, I uh, that would be my only concern is once we start setting that precedent for this area that the people that have invested their life uh, savings and things that uh, their property value would be damaged any other comments by the board if not miss Christie let's do a roll call vote Mr. Williams? Yeah. Ms. Galicia? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Navarre? Yes. Mr. Little? Yes. Ms. Cobb? Yes. Ms. Dickerson? Yes. Mr. Link? Yes. Mr. Armitar? Yes. Nine four. Item eight passes. Item nine, take appropriate action on case EX dash zero nine one seven dash zero zero eight a request by timothy franks for an exception to allow residential development manufactured home in the 100 block of syria road in ward three i will entertain a motion for approval with the stipulation so, so moved. moved motion by mr navarre and a second by miss cobb miss wallace 
This property is located in South Lake Charles and encompasses 0.18 acres of single family residential zone property. The applicants purchased the property in 2016 and were not aware of the zoning. They would like to locate a used manufactured home on the lot for rental purposes. As a matter of information, the zoning on this street was mixed residential until the residents requested and the police jury approved a rezoning to R1. We have received a petition from some neighbors opposed to this request. The petition is on your tablets. And again, because there is no evidence of a hardship, the staff recommends the request be denied. Should the board grant the request, the staff recommends the following stipulations that the development adhere to the site plan on file and that the manufactured home be skirted prior to utilities being connected. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. Um, we do have one blue card that's filled out. It's not marked whether it's an opposition or a proponent. Um, if the applicant has anything to add to the staff's presentation, you may come to the podium at this time if you're present. I believe he's coming. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were, had dropped something and we're making <laughs> your way here. Um, okay, um, we will call Mr. Nathaniel Washington. That is you. <laughs> but you're not the applicant. Okay. He's <clears throat> getting the walk. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, Nathaniel Washington, 139 Syria Road, and uh, we're asking that you guys um, just deny this trailer moved in our neighborhood. Moved in our neighborhood. Um, I moved there, probably one of the newest residents on the street, nine years ago. Um, quiet neighborhood with my kids. Um, every car on the street, we know it's a neighbor. Um, the gentleman that wants to put a trailer there, from what I understand, is um, wanting to put some workers in it eventually. And we already have a situation where we have a man camp on the other end of our street, and that's terrible. Um, I have a 14-year-old daughter. Um, she catches the bus. She walks from the corner to home. That house could have as many as 20 men out front on nights, evenings, they're drinking, belligerent. Um, she shouldn't have to be nervous, worrying about guys whistling at her. Um, this is not just my kids. I've heard other kids tell their parents as well issues about that house. Um, if we allow this, there are other lots on our street as well. And I fear that we'll open up the floodgates. Um, my, my, I'm 40. Most of the residents on my street, they're close to retiring. They don't deserve this. Um, music loud all times of the night. They've worked hard. It's a quiet street. We had no issues. I've never seen an issue until this last man camp has been bought, rented, I guess. And there's a lot of gentlemen, you know what I'm getting at. Yes. And I also have a petition signed by just about everyone on my street. Everyone is against it. If you could uh, pass it to staff. Absolutely. Okay. Two yeah. second to last row back there. That's my that's my neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We're like a family, and we showed up today to oppose this. Can we get a visual representation of those of you? Know? Thank you. I really don't have much to add to it. It's just. Okay. I mean, Any questions for Mr. Washington? Thank you, sir. We appreciate your comments. Thanks for listening. This time, if the applicant would like to address any of the concerns uh, brought forth by the opposition, you may come to the podium at this time. Okay. Any other questions or comments by the board? <laughs> Ms. Christie, let's do a roll call vote. Ms. Dickerson? No. Mr. Smith? No. Mr. Little? No. Mr. Williams? No. Ms. Galicia? No. Ms. Cobb? No. Mr. Navarre? Nope. 
Mr. Link? No. And Mr. Armatore? No. Nine against. Item nine fails. Item 10, take appropriate action on RZ0917-0027, a request by Cypress Planning and Development LLC to rezone from agricultural to light, uh, I'm sorry, to light commercial, uh, to light commercial to allow commercial development, convenience store in the 7,000 block of Highway 27 South in Ward 4. I will entertain a motion for approval with the stipulations. So Real move. Moment. Motion by Ms. Dickerson and a second by Mr. Navarre right behind her. <laughs> Ms. Wallace. <laughs> this property is located in Carlos and encompasses nearly two acres. In 2009, a portion of the land was rezoned to allow a retail use in an ice house, neither one of which were developed. Now the applicant would like to have a larger tract rezoned. If approved, the applicant will sell the land to a developer who plans to construct the store. We have not received any written opposition to this request. And because minimal impacts are to be expected, the staff recommends that the request be granted with the following stipulations. That the development adhere to the site plan on file, provided that the director may authorize adjustments. That all exterior lighting must be oriented inward toward the development to minimize intrusion onto surrounding properties. That a drainage impact analysis will be required unless appropriate waiver is granted by the Division of Engineering. That screening must be provided in accordance with Section 2650 of the Parish Code that the existing oak trees should be maintained to the maximum extent possible, and that permitting is subject to approval of the Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development. Thank you, Ms. Wallace. We have one blue card in opposition at this time. If the applicant would like to come and add the staff's presentation, you may come at this time. Please state your name and address for the record. Hello, Joe Ellender. My address is 297 Edwin Ellender Road, Sulphur 70665. Uh, this property, uh, in prior years, uh, there's several slabs on that property. There's a there's C1 on that corner, and approximately 0.44 of an acre is on C1. There was a, in 70s and 80s, there was cafes there, and there was a, a gas station there. And prior to that, in the 50s and 60s, there was gas stations there. We removed some tanks there on that site. Uh, we're, we're wanting to sell to a convenience store. Uh, you know, the footprint that was there in the 70s doesn't allow for the traffic and the setbacks from the Highway 27. And you also got a highway, uh, State Highway 1133. And so there's more setbacks. And, uh, you know, with uh, gas stations, you're trying to get things moved around. and it takes a bigger footprint, sure. and that's why we're rezoning the L-shaped property to give a bigger footprint of about an acre and a half for, for the convenience store. It'd be a, a convenience store, gas, diesel, and a deli. Okay. And uh, it's a very busy corner with the development out that way, and uh, there's a lot of need there. Sure. Any other questions for Mr. Ellender? All right. Thank you. you Maybe may seated. We'll call um, is it Yvonne Rougeau. Am I saying, pronouncing that? Item 10. Did anyone fill out a blue card in opposition for item 10? I'm just mispronouncing the name. Maybe, they, maybe they're for it now. Um, any questions or comments by the board? Okay. Um, we do not have any opposition. All right, seeing no opposition, all in favor state aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Item 10 passes. Item 11, applicant asks that uh, RZ0917-0030, request by JDAD LLC to rezone from general commercial to light industrial to allow an industrial development, a distillery, at 5721 Common Street and Ward 3 be deferred. I will entertain a motion to defer for 30 days. So move. Motion by Mr. Navarre and a second by Ms. Cobb. All in favor state aye. Aye. All opposed? Item 11 is deferred. Item 12, the applicant asks that case VAR-0917-0026, a request by JDAD LLC for a variance to allow alcohol beverage business within 300 feet of a residence at 5721 Common Street and Ward uh, three be deferred. 
I will entertain a motion so to defer. <laughs> motion by Mr. Navarre and a second by Ms. Cobb. All in favor state aye. 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 All opposed? Item 12 is deferred. Well, Item 13, over. advise that the police jury took the following action on the September 21st, 2017 with reference to the recommendation of the Planning and Zoning Board from the September 19th, uh, 2017 meeting. Applicant Daigle, located at Borel Road, Planning and Zoning Board denied and the police jury upheld. Applicant Mad Contracting at uh, location North Perkins Ferry Road, Planning and Zoning Board passed and the police jury upheld. Applicant Castillo, the location was Horseman Road, Planning and Zoning Board passed and the police jury upheld. Applicant Hollowell at uh, location Renee Street, Planning and Zoning Board denied and the police jury upheld. Applicant Thibodeau at Highway 108 West, Planning and Zoning Board passed and the police jury overturned. Applicant Rogers, location Big Lake Road, Planning and Zoning Board passed and the police jury upheld. Applicant Peterson, location Goss Road, Planning and Zoning Board denied and uh, they actually withdrew uh, before they went to the police jury. Uh, applicant Oak Run at location Manchester Road, Planning and Zoning Board passed and the police jury upheld. Applicant Areno, location Areno Road, Planning and Zoning Board passed and the police jury upheld. We were busy last month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Item 14, advised uh, that the next regularly scheduled Planning and Zoning meeting will be held on Tuesday, November 14, 2017 in the police jury meeting room. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Navarre. I'd and a like second. To, second by Ms. Cobb. We are adjourned. I'd like to I'm sorry.